You know the main problem with plants? They don't glow. Guess what? We're fixing that. Anthony here for DNews. This week there was a really interesting Kickstarter that blew up for glowing plants. You can buy your own bioluminescent plant. Here's the thing, bioluminescent plants do not exist in nature. So there is a team creating bioluminescent plants. We have a couple of them here in the studio with me. Uh, this is Anthony and Omri, two of the guys on the team. Thanks for coming out, guys. Uh, congratulations, by the way, on reaching your goal. You guys are making a glowing plant. Are you guys creating like an entirely new living thing? Is this gonna be like a new subspecies of this plant? It's exactly that. There is already one uh, synthetic creature. Craig Ventel created it. It's, uh, he synthesized a million base pair genome for entire bacteria and he booted it up and he even wrote his name and the literal quotation, even an email address inside the genome because he could. What? So that will be the second synthetic region. So this is entirely through DNA sequencing and, and adding new DNA to this plant. Like, give me an overview of how this happens. By the way, we are not synthesizing the whole genome, just the design that we want to insert into the genome. So you're just taking the glowing part from this bacteria and putting it into this plant that doesn't glow. Yeah, so this system, this bioluminescent system, consists of a protein called luciferase. It's, a, it's an enzyme, it's a small machine that breaks down luciferin, which is the fuel to produce light. And it's called uh, cold light because it's so efficient, it doesn't produce almost any heat. So this system of luciferase, luciferin exists in many creatures, so in fireflies, in bacteria, in some uh, fungi. So we can use the same system, the DNA that is translated into this protein, into these machines, move it from one creature to another creature. It sounds so simple the way you're saying it. We just move DNA from one place to another. So how, how is it done? How do you insert DNA from another living creature into a plant? This is a process called transformation. Uh, you can do it uh, differently for different species. It's very simple in bacteria and yeast. It's more complicated in plants. There are several uh, methods we can use in plants. One of them is using agrobacterium. It's a small bacteria that knows how to inject part of its genome into plant. Or a, a gene gun, which is uh, coating DNA into gold nanoparticles and just high velocity bombarding them into cells. And some of them randomly will uh, integrate into the cell. The bacteria method's really reliable. It's fast, it's good for prototyping, you know, it's, it gets a relatively good yield out of it. And I would also assume that there's probably more bacteria in the world than gold nanoparticles. That's right. Okay. <laughs> the, the, the restriction on the, on the agrobacterium though is that it's also a plant pest. And so anything that we create with the agrobacterium would be regulated for for good reasons by the USDA. So, you know, we can't offer any product that's made with agrobacterium to backers without actually first getting a permit and the notification from the USDA. So that's why okay. what we're doing, we're, we're prototyping with the agrobacterium till we test and really make sure that our DNA sequences are good, that we've got the right balance of different enzymes, and we really optimize the amount of light that we can get out of these products. And then we'll use the gene gun method. We'll coat the nanoparticles with our DNA, fire them at it. We only get about 1% of the 1% of the plant cells that we shoot mm -hmm. with, with these gold particles will absorb the DNA. And so we use that to then create the version that we're going to be able to release to. But the great thing about bioluminescence is the selection is very simple. You close yeah. the light and whichever one glows the best, that's the one you work with. And, and in terms of the, the glowing plant, I mean, people are kind of seeing this as like a means to an end. On your, on your Kickstarter, you're kind of saying like, look, it's, it's electricity without a light bulb. It's electricity without CO2. Like what's the wattage on a plant? <laughs> like, am I gonna like, am I gonna be able to put this plant in and replace a lamp? Not yet. Okay. Not yet. I think I think one day that's where we'd like to get to. What we do know is that you know the energy efficiency of biology is really really powerful. You know they're like it's the, the sugar in cells mm -hmm. because you can convert it almost 100% to light. Could we turn trees into street lamps? I think you know there's, there's if you think about it, the trees already grow, grow. They've got good sunlight already in the day. And they have nice surface area. I mean, I literally, on my way here to pick up the car this morning, I walked down the street and there was, there's trees and ivy and bushes all, you know, the whole sides of the street I was, I was walking down were, were covered in plants. That's a huge surface area. I feel like there are people who are, who are a little worried about something like this, who are a little worried about messing with DNA and like, they're, what happens when the plants on the side of the road glow? What are like the unforeseen circumstances and side effects? So in this project, no, we're just working on bioluminescence. Even we talked to Joel Church, a very notable uh, synthetic biologist from uh, Harvard University. He, I think, said it's um, the safest you can get using synthetic biology. Mm -hmm. 
And that's part of it. You want to make a, a project that is so obviously beautiful and, and useful and not dangerous. Also, when you add bioluminescence, it actually takes energy from the cell. It's less evolutionary adaptable than just wild type. It, it, I don't think it will survive in nature without human intervention. So uh, it's the safest we can get. Like, is this going to work? Like, you're going you're gonna to sequence this, you're going to get this DNA, and you're going to put it in a plant, and it's just, okay. We're, we're not right. even the first people to do this. I think that's something that's, that's, you know, we may be the first people to sort of talk publicly about this, but you know, this, this T-shirt I'm wearing, mm -hmm. you know, this was first done in 1984. More recently, in 2010, some researchers at the State University of New York, they built on that work, and then they added in the Lux Operon that, that Henri yeah. was already talking about, and that, and that plant glow. That's awesome. So if you guys want to be on the ground floor, if you want to be part of the first step where, where this starts happening, uh, you can go check out their Kickstarter. We're going to put a link down below. Uh, you could get one of these t-shirts. They brought this really sweet vase that looks like a light bulb. I like that. And you can get your own glowing plant and glowing plant seeds. So go check them out. Guys, thank you so much for coming. And uh, be sure to subscribe for more D News.